Hey everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Today we're going to get started reading a different kind of book and it's called Aesop's Fables. Do you know what a fable is? If not, that's okay. A fable is a short story that helps teach lessons and usually contains a moral at the end. And a moral is usually a lesson or an idea that readers should have by the end of the story. And characters in fables are usually animals, which is pretty interesting too. So we're gonna be seeing different types of animals in each fable. Before we get started actually reading them, I thought it was important to go over some vocabulary that we're gonna be seeing. So we are going to look at that first, Aesop's Fables. First word we're going to see is slurped. And if you see right next to slurped, there's a V that's in little parentheses. This V means a verb, and it lets us know that we're looking at the definition of a verb for the word slurped. Sometimes words have different meanings depending on the parts of speech. That's why we put these little parentheses there to let us know that this word is a verb, and this is the meaning of it. Slurped means ate or drank noisily. Usually, this word doesn't have a great association with it. Usually means someone's not being very polite if you eat your food or drink your drink not so nicely. Next, we have devised. And devised is a verb, and it means formed a plan with careful thought. Devised. Flattering. Flattering is an adjective. It describes a noun. It describes something. Flattering means full of praise or complimentary. Flattering. And next we have compliments. And compliments is a noun. And it's expressions of admiration or praise. Compliments. Alrighty, friends, those are the words that we are going to see. Now, let's go and read our first two fables, Aesop's Fables. Retold by Julie Harding and illustrated by Maria Boris. So these fables are very, very old, but these two ladies retold them. Here's our table of contents. Today we are going to be reading The Fox and the Stork and The Fox and the Crow. The Fox and the Stork. Now friends, while we're reading, I want you guys to visualize this fable. So good readers create pictures in their mind while they're reading. I want you to kind of think about maybe what the characters look like, what's happening. And at the end, I'm going to ask you to draw kind of what you thought was happening in the story. So you guys are going to be visualizing while I read. Are you ready? Awesome. The Fox and the Stork. The fox invited his friend, the stork, over for some homemade soup. When the stork arrived for dinner, the fox poured the soup into a flat dish and set it on the table for them to eat. The stork was very hungry, but all he could do was dip the tip of his long beak into the dish. The fox laughed at his prank, and he easily slurped up all the soup while the poor stork was left with nothing for dinner. The next day, the stork decided to return the favor and invited the fox to his home for dinner. The stork placed some tasty meat in a jar with a long neck and set it on the table for both of them to share. The fox eagerly tried to get to the meat, but he could not get past the jar's narrow neck. The stork, however, ate easily because his long beak could reach down into the jar. The hungry fox learned his lesson and admitted that his prank the day before had been wrong. Here's the moral of the story. 
the moral, the important lesson that all readers should be learning. Are you ready for it? If you do mean things to others, they might do mean things to you in return. I want you to take a second, take out your journal, and I want you to, def to reflect on this moral of the story. What I also want you to do right now is to take one or two minutes. I want you to close your eyes. And then I would like you to draw what you visualized in the story. Does that sound good? Awesome. We are going to go to our next fable, the fox and the crow. The hungry fox sat, saw the crow fly to her favorite branch in a nearby tree. In her beak, she carried a tasty morsel of cheese. The crafty fox quickly devised a plan and trotted over to the tree to talk to the crow. Oh, Madam Crow, you truly are the most magnificent bird I have ever seen, he said sweetly. His flattering words caught the crow's attention, and she gazed down at the admiring fox. You fly so fast and so gracefully, the fox continued. No doubt you sing as beautifully as you fly. Now the crow was a vain bird who loved to hear compliments. Since the fox was singing her praises, she decided to sing her own song for him. And as soon as the crow opened her beak, the pieces of cheese fell out and tumbled down into the eager fox's waiting mouth. When the fox was finished eating, he smiled up at the dismayed crow. I thank you, Madam Crow, for the delicious snack, he said. Here's the moral of the story. Do not trust strangers who engage in flattery. Mm, that's interesting. First thing I want you to do is reflect on the moral. What do you think about this? Have you ever had an experience like this? Next, I want you to take one to two minutes, close your eyes, and then draw a picture of what you visualized while we were reading. Okay, friends, I hope you enjoyed your first two fables. We'll be back in a few other videos to finish Aesop's Famous Fables. I'll see you later.